kill someone. And that's not, I don't think that's quite the same thing as when Amos said, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty sea. I don't think we're talking about the same thing. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. But the Blake Sloan Coffin raises the question about that text. Who's in charge of the irrigation system? Mm. Because that may be the barometer by which justice occurs according to the kingdom of God. Mm. Because if Wall Street is in charge of the irrigation system, I don't know if it's going to be justice mm. the way I'm talking about justice. Mm. How can there be justice? when we're still having a debate about equal work for equal pay. Mm. How can there be justice when we're debating rates of minimum wage to $10.10 when minimum wage has failed to keep productivity, keep pace of productivity for 44 years and the minimum wage right now should be $16.50? Mm. How can there be justice when 55% of whites, 83% of blacks, 81% of Hispanics, 49% of Asians, 78% of Native Americans, and 61% of those who are classified as other fourth graders are reading below proficiency in the state of That's right. That's right. How can there be justice? Since 1983, higher education, spending on higher education has decreased in California by 13%, while spending in correction programs has skyrocketed by 436%. There is a part of us that is required to exhibit the external practices resulting from our internal beliefs so that justice, as it is divinely defined, can be manifested within the human condition. So it may start internal, but if it just stays internal, mm. it's still no, it's not doing any good. All right, all right. How do you do justice on your job? Mm. How do you do justice in your home? Mm. When you, how do you do justice when engaging with your neighbor? Yeah. How do you, especially when no one is watching? Yeah. Or when you can get away with doing the opposite because it benefits you personally. Yeah. Justice, as God reveals to us, can place us in a paradoxical situation of doing for our neighbor that which, we, which may be contradictory to our own self-interest. Yeah. And while we know that God's justice no more than a simple notion of fairness of right and wrong. Was established by God's people individually and collectively. So that the kingdom of God can be lived out. We also know that the poor in spirit cannot be blessed if we do not do justice. Mm -hmm. A good example that I like to use about what is justice is that if I had Ten people lined up, and I had a hundred dollars, and I gave them one ten. That would be fair. Mm -hmm. But let's say these first three need more, mm. and so I give them an extra five. So I just there's five less. That may not be fair, but it might be just. Mm. Come on now. Right. Right. So, so 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 let's so let's not ever confuse fairness with justice. That's right. That's right. Amen. And God is not fair. God is just. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. No matter how committed we claim to be as followers of the teachings of Jesus, we cannot embrace the Beatitudes that I mentioned earlier if we are not equally devoted to Micah's call to do justice. Mm. And then verse 8 it gradually becomes more difficult in its implementation as it moves from the requirement to do justice to the condition to love mercy. Mm. To love mercy, do we really think about what that means in the, uh, in, apart from we just read it here in the Bible? Mm. To love mercy is to live devoted to the concepts of compassion. To live to the concepts of compassion, forgiveness, and understanding. It is to treat our neighbor with the same empathy that we might hold out for ourselves. That's right. Amen. To love mercy is to live life 
correct it, commanding yes. the inconvenient love of Jesus. Yes. It is to take the Good Friday scenario seriously, knowing that that can, not only that it cannot be avoided, but it's the only way that you, we can realize resurrection. Mm. How can followers of Jesus fulfill the commandment to bring good news to the poor, the economic poor as well as the poor in spirit, mm. if, it's, if there is not first an adherence to love and mercy? Unlike the gospel narrative which tells us about Good Friday at the end, Micah, through his call to do justice, then to love mercy, circumvents the gospel account of Jesus' life by placing Calvary in the forefront. Our attempts to love mercy are always overshadowed by the cross, providing us with a reason not to engage in a tough struggle right. of what it means right. to be a right. follower of Jesus. Right. Yes. Uh, if we have no interest in Micah's words in chapter 6, we might as well forego any reason to embrace the Sermon on the Mount beyond the desire to impress our friends with our powers of rope memorization. Oh, that's right. But the degree of difficulty becomes even greater as Michael concludes in the third commandment, which is to walk humbly with your God. Yes. Not walk arrogantly, but humbly yes. with your God. I need not remind you how difficult that can be. Come on, make it plain. I can tell you firsthand, sometimes it's hard to walk, for me to walk humbly with God because God is getting in my way, stepping on my feet, mm. keeping me from doing what I really want to do. Mm. To walk humbly with God is not to lead. Mm. It's not to use God as a cosmic dummy putting words in God's mouth to justify our wants and desires. To walk humbly with God is to live life with external peace, external joy, external hope, and, and, and love that God has placed internally in each and every one of us. All right, all right. Nor does it mean that we sit idly by, waiting for the next calamity to just hit us in the solar plexus. There, there, were, there were defenses against anything that could happen to us. You know, to walk humbly with, with God means to draw your strength from God. Mm -hmm. It means that you don't have to be mean spirited and cold hearted. It doesn't mean that you have to walk around with your back bent over, yeah. just taking every blow that life gives you. Yeah. We can say in the words of Martin Luther King, it's only when men and women straighten their backs up that they're going places because a man can't ride your back unless it's back. Yeah. 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 Well, God means different things to different people. Come For Abraham and Sarah, it meant trusting God and walking with God into the unknown. Right. For Moses, walking humbly with God meant trusting that God could equip you to do things that you could not do on your own. Yeah. For David, walking with God meant confessing one's sins before God as we see in Psalm 51. For Job, walking humbly with God meant that he would not understand the ways and thoughts of God, and that God was God and he wasn't. For Esther, walking with God, uh, meant that she would have to be called upon to risk her life for others. Right. As for Jesus, it meant a lonely night in Gethsemane, praying, if thou be willing, remove this cup, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Right. That's right. And as for, as far as much as people want the preaching to tell them what it means, to walk with God. And I get that. You, you didn't give us the answer. I get that a lot when I write my comments. Well, you didn't tell us what should happen. I cannot. This is the tough struggle that each of us must figure out for ourselves. What does it mean for you to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God? See, I, I know what it means for me. But my walk ain't your walk. That's right. What does it mean right. for you That's right. to do justice, love, mercy, and walk home with God? What does that look like on Tuesday when you're catching hell from all sides? Amen. And what does it look like when you feel like Billy Holiday when she says, I've been down so long that down don't worry me? Oh, what does it right. look like then? That's what does right. it mean That's right. to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with God? According to Micah in verse 8, God asks of us, 
It's not rocket science. Mm. The instructions on programming the Blu-ray are more, far more complicated than what Mike was talking about in the test. Right. Man. And, and what's more, from our perspective, we already know God has lavished all the grace upon us that we would ever need to be changed on the inside and then let that change show on the outside. Mm. To be a follower of Jesus' teachings is not a set of hoops that we got to jump through in order to make God love us. Mm. Ours is a faith that contains an outflow of unmerited grace. Mm. It's letting out what God has already put in us. Mm. It is letting out the joy that God has put in us. It is letting out the peace that God has put in us. It is letting out the hope that God has put in us. Right. It is letting out the joy that God is putting us. And it is letting out the love that God has put in our heart and in our soul. And that can only be achieved by our courageous commitment mm. to stop by counting. See, you can't do justice if you want to sidestep Calvary. Mm. You can't love mercy if you want to sidestep Calvary. You can't walk humbly with God if you mm. want to sidestep Calvary. And you can't experience resurrection mm. if you want to sidestep Calvary. As I mentioned earlier, 13 years ago today, Reverend Michael Smith and myself started this ministry. Mm. Amen. The past 13 years, we have seen God's power unto salvation. We have seen it, how inconvenient love can heal, yeah. can make new, can transform, and cheer. Everybody here that has a witness is a witness to how inconvenient love can transform the soul. Yeah. We've been held together by strong shoestring and prayer. Ah. There's a church with much larger budgets than ours are closing their doors. That's right. But ours are still open. That's right. Why? Amen. I believe the why is found in this text. Mm. I believe that God is saying to the resurrection community in 2014 that if you want to be a church in my name, in my vision, mm. in my grace, on, you yeah. must in 2014 be a church that is committed to doing justice, yes. loving mercy, yes. and walk humbling with God. Amen. If you don't want to do that, you might be like the rest of the church of 2015. But if you want to be a church in my name, yes. you'll have to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly right, with God. Right. If you dare do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God, you will know for yourself mm. that your best start will come from your struggle. Mm. The seed of your success. But that's the ransom that God demands for our redemption, our peace, our hope, our grace, our blessings, our strength, our renewal, and our transformation. Micah 6 8 is the truth of grace in action, of being transformed by the love of God from inside out. Yes. God would never require something of us that God was not willing to do in order to, in order to provide us with God's grace. Right? That's right. Do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly Amen. with God on the path already blazed by Jesus. Amen. And I hear Jesus saying to us this morning, go and do likewise. Amen. Have a good week, brothers.